On this channel, I've talked a lot about the technical aspects of camera sensor design, going so far as to release a 40 plus minute video about all of the things which influence their performance in low light. But there was one crucial aspect that I neglected to mention during that video. You see, for a number of years now, work has been proceeding in order to bring to perfection the crudely conceived idea of a device that could not only reduce photonic modulation, but also be applied to conventional NMOS sensors. Such a device was the chromatic encabulator. So what is a chromatic encabulator? Well, unlike conventional devices that reduce hyperfocal noise in the codec domain, the chromatic encabulator sits between the photodiode and the diagonal capacitor, allowing it to bin pixels from multiple ISO subgroups without having to re-mosaic the image prior to digitization. Now, the original design was introduced by Sony back with the A7Z2 and managed to boost the sensor's pixel depth such that side fumbling was effectively prevented. Later iterations of the design would feature a layer of transparent vibranium surrounded by a silver ring that could be tapped for two colorless mana to boost shutter performance even further. So how can you tell whether a particular camera features an encabulated sensor? Well, such cameras will usually have sensors which glow phosphorosyncrastically when exposed to high levels of tachyon radiation revealing a metaphorical bird's nest of information about the sensor's capabilities. By observing the practical applications of the AI blockchain, we can build up a picture of which chroma channels are being upscaled and which are being rendered unusable by the lens's focal length. In modern cameras, the chromatic encabulator has reached a high level of development and is successfully being deployed in co-ambulatic AI workflows to recoagulate image diffusion. To demonstrate the power of chromatic encabulation, here is a side-by-side -side comparison of two different clips, one captured on an encabulated sensor and one captured on a sensor with a conventional Bayer shutter. It may be hard to see the difference after the image has been compressed by YouTube, but I'll be sure to provide a link to a more compressed version of the comparison in the description down below. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this video. My name is Cayman Crocker, signing off.